The Manawatu is a wet and windy place at the best of times, but in mid-September, the heavens opened and showed they really meant business. 175 millimetres drenched farms on the Manawatu plains in two giant bursts. Marie Davy and husband Kevin farm 160 hectares with 450 cars about 15 kilometres south of Palmerston North. With major waterways running through their property, they were victims of flooding of biblical proportions, losing about half the farm to the water, for the time being at least. Marie told me their story. When the, the rains came from up Appity Way, which yeah. we've got the Arua running behind us, mm. water, uh, we're the last farm before the water hits the Manawatu. When right. the Manawatu rose, all the floodgates were put on hold. Right. All these main tributaries, the Arua, were all backed up yeah. and we just saw a catastrophe on our hands. So you saw, you saw it just flooding right down here and then we go underneath this bridge and then it becomes a spillway, is that right? Yeah, the main drain reaches the top of the stock banks mm -hmm. and the lower point is the spillway just here. Yeah. And once the floodgates were shut, the water just poured into... So it all just backed up here? Yeah, backed up. And what was it right up to that to that stock bank there? Flowed over the stock bank. Wow. Actually filled this 200 acre basin here with water. Really? So uh, what, this relatively green area as well? Yes, right up to the top of the stock bank. Just Gosh. beyond that's the Orua River. Right. And for as far as you can see, for a fortnight, yeah. that was all underwater. Yeah. Lapping over the road, the right. stockyards down there, you couldn't yeah. see the top posts. Good heavens. was all underwater. This is half of the farm. We yeah. milked 450 cows here, right. and in effect, 200 acres of it yeah. was underwater for two weeks. So how on earth do you recover from this? Very hard. Mm. Production dropped. Uh, a lot of sacrifices were made. The herd that grazes over here had to come back over the road, um, ate all the grass that the second herd was meant to get, yeah. and of course the rotation's quicker. Supplementary and bought-in feed had to come in, and we basically used the property as a standoff yeah. pad. Right. Um, there were days we couldn't get on and, yeah. and graze. Uh, two weeks later, you look at the farm, it's starting to green up, the water's gone. I think out of all this land, we're going to lose just the two paddocks. Yeah, but it's getting there. That's the challenge. Uh, the so how challenge. do you actually recover? Do you just hope the grass is going to grow up through all that silt? Well, basically, you have to stand back and just watch it. Um, what we found was the clover sprung up quickly, put its head above water when it right. could. The bladed grass just went yellow, rotted, right. died. Yeah. Um, so basically, we just had to sit back, wait for the paddocks to dry up get the cows in there, chew off what they would eat, and a lot of it they wouldn't eat. Yeah. We had to make them eat it so that the new shoots could come away again. Has it knocked you around financially? I mean, you must have lost milk production. Uh, well, we're share milking, and before the flood, we were way ahead of our record target. Mm. Um, we've dropped now. We're behind the eight ball, but I mm. still believe with good management we can pick this herd up again right. and, and keep going. Not easy for you too, though, when it's right in the middle of calving. We, we're heading towards the end of calving, but you're right, right we were still calving. Um, it was pouring down with rain. Mm. We didn't lose any animals, but we certainly had a lot of downer cows at yeah. that time of the year. Mm. We're going to see if we can actually pick ourselves up and recoup. Yeah. You know, what was a record, going to be a record season, even so early this year, yeah. um, I still think we can we can full steam yeah. ahead and get out of out of this. The flooding hasn't just wiped out half the Davies farm, it's also caused a major headache for council staff with the destruction of part of the culvert under the bridge where we're standing. Much of the surrounding bank has caved in. This culvert was an extension on this concrete culvert down here and with all the salt it blocked and it's by no means small the council had to come in and dig it out just to get the water away from yeah. from the area as quickly as possible. You know, the longer these paddocks were underwater, the worse it was going to get for us. Absolutely. Further south, just out of Levin, another sufferer from the big wet, although this cropper won't suffer setbacks anything like his dairying neighbours to the north. Chris Pashini is just getting his paddocks turned over now to plant onion seeds, but the rain has meant he's way behind schedule. He's put us behind on our sowings, um, 
and uh, yeah, usually um, you know, the later you get, well, it's getting marginal for sowing onions now. Um, but um, uh, hopefully, it all depends on the rest of the season. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, we don't get a cold, wet, wet um, uh, spring like we had last year. Yeah, spring, summer. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess the, the wet means the seeds don't germinate so well. Well, it's just that it's getting late. You know, um, it's like a lot of crops, you know, peas and all that. You know, they've got a certain time frame to go in. Yeah. And yeah, with the onions, well, sort of, uh, we're we're actually putting in hybrids at the moment, which you can get away with a little bit, but um, it's still getting late. So does that knock you around at all financially? Well, yeah, yeah, well, that will knock the yields back. You know. Mike Will farms 280 cattle and 2,500 sheep on nearly 400 hectares of hill country at Waituna West to Fieldings North. It's country that can produce some wild and woolly weather at the best of times, but nothing like the September storm that killed hundreds of lambs. When we called, Mike was still facing the heartbreaking task of collecting the last of them from his paddocks. It sort of started about 10 days ago on the Thursday. We had solid rain all day. It was dead calm, and then on the Friday, the wind just got up, and it was just gale force winds through here. And you know, the Friday morning, my dog got knocked off the yeah. four wheeler. Oh, yeah. And yeah, then Saturday we had the rain and the wind. We had about 45 mils in four hours over sort of Saturday lunchtime. The power was off all day, so cattle walked through electric fences, brake fences, and all that. And the lamb losses, you know, the lambs and the ewes. Went to the fence, you know, went tried to find shelter, but there just wasn't enough shelter that day, right in the middle of lambing. So, how many did you lose? Well, well over 500 anyway, with what I've picked up and counted. So, come docking, that'll be the real, that'll tell us what we really did lose. Mike estimates he's lost a good quarter of this year's lambs. Generally, we docked 2,400, 2,500. This year, 1,800 will be good. So, so what actually killed them? Oh, just just the, the the rain and then the cold wind yeah. just got to them, hypothermia probably. Even lambs seven to ten days old, yeah. you know, if they were struggling a bit for feed off mum, you know, that was just enough to knock them over. We were in a nice nice weather, they'd, they'd survive. Mm. You know, things were looking quite good, you know, lamb was looking up a bit, but take 600 odd lambs out of the equation, it's it's going to hurt. These were basically the strongest winds that I've seen, seen up here and then throw the rain in on top and that was just enough. And generally in September we don't have the extreme winds. You, you know, our worst month for winds November. Whereas September in the middle of lambing couldn't have been worse really. Down on the Manawatu flatlands, Robert Irvine runs 300 cars on 90 hectares of flood prone land. They're used to it, but not on the scale of this September storm. We farm on the banks of the Manawatu River and we acknowledge it's a floodplain. Uh, we lease the farm from the regional council, and so we expect to get a flood at least once every year. We've had the water over twice in the last two weeks. The pasture damage is significant, um, and the performance on animals has been, uh, we've had a big knock. We were milking, the cows were only doing 1.8 kilograms of solids a day before the flood, and now they're doing 1.3. So we're taking a, a reasonable hit in production. We went to once a day milking to reduce the stress on the animal. With cows unable to graze the damaged pasture because they'd turn it to porridge, Robert's having to feed out 10 to 12 kilograms of dry matter a day, plus his reserves of silage. That all costs money. It's part of the business plan. Um, it, yes, it does cost money. It's not something we'd expect to be doing at this time of the year, but um, it's the farm that I've got. It, it floods and you've got to have a contingency plan. Production losses this month so far are about two and a half thousand kilos. And uh, yeah, October, when we're supposed to be at peak, it'll be significant there. Uh, we will go back onto twice a day milking soon. Uh, we've applied some fertilizer. The aeroplane was here yesterday. A um, little bit of nitrogen, some sulfur. And uh, that'll help the pastures because they're pretty yellow and uh, pretty uh, under a lot of stress. So was it just the flooding Manawatu River that did the damage, or was it just the huge rainfall? It was a combination of both. There was 160 mils plus of rain on the other side of the ranges. That came through the Manawatu Gorge, um, like 
flood levels, the, the gorge was over 13 metres uh, flow or depth of flow at, at its peak. Um, this farm floods when the gorge is at eight. So uh, that's the warning that we get. The, the horizons have a, a, a warning system. I can ring a, a, an 0800 number and I know where the what level the rivers are running at. The day we called, local farm advisor Tim Ferguson was paying a visit for a post-flood checkup. He's seen a lot of damage in the district. A lot of water, um, a lot of water, and, and I guess um, in some areas that they'd, they'd been really dry in the autumn, winter, so they were quite low on feed and, and their stock were not necessarily in the best condition. And then um, just with it being so wet, uh, real inability to, to eat the pasture, and, um, and so it further knocks production and, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and costs them financially. I mean, do they build into their budgets these sort of flood events around this area? Yeah, I mean, as best you can, uh, but you, you can't always. And if you're sort of on a run of bad luck of a, of a dry season and then, a, and then as it starts to come away, not being able to eat the grass that's there, um, it can really knock you. Um, high mortgage repayments and, and things. And on the eastern side of the Irvine farm, the paddocks have taken even more of a hammering than on the west. The pasture was green, vibrant, like further out on the farm. Um, it's just been underwater for longer. Uh, it's a l lower lying part of the farm, and the water has been here for probably 10 days. Um, there's more silt on it, um, and it's a mess. We'll play it by ear. Some of it we will sow some seed. We'll add some chicory perhaps just to fill the gaps, um, which is a short rotation plant that'll grow quickly and provide us with some feed. Um, we just have to wait for it to dry out and assess the damage.